All right, good morning. It's still a little dark. The sun's just starting to come up over the horizon. Um, it looks a little brighter on the screen than it really is out here. But I am at Saturday's Market in Middletown, PA. Middletown, PA. I'm about a half hour from home. This is the last market they're having here after I think it was 62 years. So I'm solo. I'm on my own. Bill's going to be here with his wife. Eric's supposed to be here. Dave's supposed to be here, so I should be able to pick up some stuff today. So um, tomorrow is looking pretty shaky for Williams Grove. Um, decided to come around over here this morning for the last one. It's not a huge market. It's all outdoor right now because the inside is done. Um, it's a shame. These places are going by the wayside. We, we're just we're losing them. So keep supporting Williams Grove. All right. So I'm gonna head off out here into the market area and go see what we can find sun's starting to come up maybe bill's got some stuff out everybody's got stuff out there's gonna be some good stuff because there's definitely nothing left inside saturday's market see you soon sun's coming up everybody's getting their stuff out getting ready Tons of people here. Actually, it's really not a whole lot. It's nothing compared to Williams Grove. It is legitimately this one aisle down to where that car is. Well, down to the parking lot. But I found Bill. I found Dave. And waiting on Eric. And we're going to get some stuff. Alright, we'll see you in a bit. There's a whole lot of peace in there. It's a box full of peace. Alright. We can go discover America with the Santa Maria. for the team. Tower City PA. This one's actually really nice, Attic Mint. Cool. Put that in the flat. Alright. Toys. All right, I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, I got a bunch of stuff from Dave. I haven't gotten a total yet because Bill's starting to pull his stuff out of his van. Um, it's getting light here. More people are showing up. So we'll take a walk around after I go through Bill's stuff. See you in a bit. All right, had to make a run back to the car to drop off some stuff. Um, I'm sorry, it's really tough to film when you're in a crowd of people that are just kind of like elbowing each other, um, trying to get the stuff. So, yeah. So that's why there's not a whole lot of footage of me diving in. But I'll show you what I grabbed. I spent 100 bucks at Bill's. I spent 10 bucks at Dave's. Um, I got some nice figurines. This one's from the 30s with the label on it. Has some Fenton. Uh, milk bottle with some buffalo nickels. I kind of got this for myself. A little nostalgia. This is cool. It's a Gettysburg souvenir, but uh, it's Rosenthal Rand's bottom. It's a nice piece of pottery. So it's not, uh, not too shabby. And then we got a bunch of manly items. Full Scout stuff. And this is all Pennsylvania Railroad 
turn of the century and just after and probably a little bit of stuff that's right right before but all Pennsylvania Railroad stuff so that's gonna be fun to go through all right I'm gonna move my car further down Eric hasn't opened his stuff up yet if he has by the time I got there cool if not we'll wait around for that and uh, try to get some footage there so we'll see you in a bit Ooh, they're diving in already I was a little slow I probably lost a ton of stuff but it's cool let's go find some goodies all right, no massive U-Haul van today, full of stuff. But he still manages to cram, I think, like 25 or 30 boxes into his little Honda, which is kind of cool. Um, here's what I wound up with. I got two boxes of stuff. It's not as crazy as Williams Grove, because again, he's not bringing the big, big van full. But uh, we got some open salts. I got a nice blue deco looking piece. Um, that's pretty cool. Got Jossa slung or swung or whatever that vase is. There's some flow blue in there. Got some carnival glass. We got some depression glass, some pretty depression glass, not junky depression glass, but so alright. I'm gonna go walk around a little bit and see if I can find some other goodies. Alright. Right. Cheap cheap. Yeah, I like cheap cheap. Cheap cheap is always good. Especially when it's 20 bucks for the whole box of hull. I think I'm gonna pay 20 bucks for this whole box of hull. I'm gonna be happy about it. I'm gonna be really happy about it, because this stuff's gorgeous. It's cheap, cheap. I like cheap, cheap. I'm gonna take the whole box. All right. Let me go pay $20 for this and run it back to the car and go find some more stuff. These are always good things to pick up the old race car stuff, especially the slot cars themselves. Some fancy little toy soldiers here. Oh, it's a shame he's broken. He's a cool one. Ooh, an encased scent. This one's a little more modern. I pick up the ones that have the wheat pennies in them, and the ones that have the Indian head pennies are even better. Let's see what we got here. Oh, he's cool. out of stone box treasures all kinds of box treasures boy they look grumpy Oof. Huh. plastic US button Where is this at? Oh, it's over in uh, Europe. Probably England. World War II bombing or something. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. What is that? Oh, not quite sure. It doesn't look like it's in the greatest of shape. Kinds of treasures. It's a cool little market. It's a shame this is the last one. Oh, he's cute. Halloween Christmas ornament. A little Halloween Christmas ornament. They're modern. They're cool. Not for me though. Watch parts. Anybody need watch parts? Pocket watch. Go repair your pocket watch. Cheap, cheap. I'm gonna start doing that now. You guys got me on a kick. I'm just gonna be like, cheap, cheap. Every time I ask for a price, I'm be like, how much? Cheap, cheap. Two and a half for all of it. The rest is in the trailer. All right, let's move along and see what else we can find. All right, we're finding some more cheap, cheap. I'm down to my last six bucks though, so I think I'm gonna have to call it quits, unfortunately. I got this really nice little Fenton fairy light. This one's actually, this one's signed too. Signed on the inside, April Anderson. That's cool. 
Um, that one's actually kind of textured too. It's not just a normal paint job. It's like glittery paint. I like it for 10 bucks? Yeah, for all of it. 10 bucks for all of it. And these are amazing. Nice purple glass. These things are stunning. A pair of these. So, five bucks for those, five bucks for that, 10 bucks for all of it. I'm happy. Cheap, cheap, $20 for that box. I am still gonna walk around a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna be able to buy too much, but uh, we are gonna go finish walking around. I might as well, I mean, it's the last time this market's gonna be here, so. Might as well go give it a shot. All right, we'll see you in a bit. These are cool. Crazy looking lamps. Headlights to shine your way. Some fun stuff. Right. Let's take a walk back over here. He's got a set of books. Still got a crowd going over here. And I've already done picked it clean good. Got the treasure over here. Nothing for me though. Oh boy. That's quite alright, partner. I feel you. Mm. Isn't worth taking a black eye. Nope, it's never worth taking a black eye. Especially from my elbow at 6 o'clock in the morning. Alright, so we're gonna call it quits. I'm done for the day. I gotta get home. I got a lot to do. A lot of packages to work on. I'm gonna have to go out Monday. Um, gotta hustle. So, alright, well, we will catch up with you in the hall. I'll go over everything I bought in a little more detail. And uh, hopefully, we'll catch up at Williams Grove soon. Alright. Later. Fly rod, damn it. Flail that fly rod. Flail that fly rod. Okay, well, we're going to roll right into our haul video and go over some of the stuff that Andrew purchased at the flea market. I'm kind of excited. He's got it all set out on the table here, so it's not necessarily a mystery unboxing because he was so excited that he's just like, look what I got! It was a smaller market. It was a slower, slower day. Um, Still some good stuff. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. I got more than I expected. Um, I'm really happy with a lot of these things. Yeah. Some of these items I'm a little more happy with. Some of them were just cheap, cheap. Cheap, cheap, we like that. I like cheap, cheap. Um, so we're, yeah, we're just gonna roll right into it because it was a shorter video and you guys yeah. are just gonna have to deal with it, I guess. So. So would you like to show me the items that you got or would you just yeah, like me to um, pick what I like and talk about it? Let's, let's start with a couple pieces I picked up towards the end of the morning. Um, these are really cool. These are black glass. They're definitely amethyst. I can see the reflection of the purple when I hold them a certain way, but they're so dark. Even holding them up to the sun, you can't see the sun coming through the glass. But they have silver overlaid um, flowers on them, and they are marked sterling on the one leaf on yeah. each of them. The ring light is going to play tricks with those because they're so <laughs> shiny. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah. So unfortunately, you can't if you can't see it. But on these, on one of the leaves, on each it of these, they are marked sterling, sterling yeah. in the leaves. So the, the band up top, I just like, I like the form, I like the glass, I like the, the flowers and the, the age yeah, of the them. I thought they were really cool. Same spot, I snagged this little guy. Little and, fairy light. And I paid 10 bucks for the pair of those and this. Um, Will Fenton and it's signed, I think April Anderson, but there's no date. Now the flowers on this are like sparkly, yeah, textured. Yeah, it is marked April Anderson. Yeah, they've got a texture to them. Which I'm not used to seeing it like that. It's usually just regular paint. So I don't know. It's cool. Fenton custard glass. I figured for five bucks I couldn't go wrong. Can't turn it. Cover your face. 
That is pretty. I like it. So I figured for five bucks I couldn't go wrong on that yeah, one. Absolutely. Um, let's see. There was another gentleman. I walk up and I see a bunch of tools and I'm like, eh. And I happen to look down and I saw a bunch of pink sticking out of the box. And I was like, okay, cool. So I walk down and the guy's talking to somebody else and everything is good. Everything works. <laughs> and I knew this was going to be an enjoyable <laughs> experience. So I said, hey, buddy, how much you want for the, uh, the pink pottery? And he goes, uh, two for 35, two for 35. Uh, and I'm like, two for 35. I'm like, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. CD player work good. I'm like, no, man, not the stereo equipment. I don't want the electronics. I want the pink pottery. <laughs> I was like, I want, I want the girly looking crap. How much for that stuff? And he's like, oh, five dollars a piece. Or you take all for 20. Cheap, 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 cheap. It's good. It's good stuff. It was great. It was hysterical. I wish I couldn't get my, I couldn't get the camera oh on my gosh, fast enough. That's hilarious. But it was cheap, cheap. It was great. So there were six pieces of, of the hull pottery. Yeah. And they're all in beautiful condition. There's, there's, I couldn't find anything wrong with any of them. And they are smaller pieces. These would typically probably sell for, I want to say, twenty to thirty-five. And I'm not sure if there are any like rare varieties here, but just based off of what you know, this size typically sells for, I would probably say twenty-five to thirty-five, or twenty to thirty-five. Some are smaller than others, but they are really pretty. Yeah, I, I like these. I, I like the color on these and the um, the Roseville pottery, but I like the Roseville a little I, better. Yeah, I am not really like... I like the darker, duller colors that they exactly, use. Exactly, yeah. The, the pastels are pretty, but they're not really my style. So. I mean, these are these would be great for like a 1950s kitchen. Yeah, I can't really do it. That's okay. I can take some okay. more back. But I don't get too much <laughs> show. Maybe. And then you get this really nice cornucopia. So for five bucks, well, no, not even five bucks a piece. Less than five bucks a piece. Yeah. They're nice. 20 bucks for six of them. So. Good that? job. Three and a half dollars a piece. Um, yeah, I was happy with that. Uh, let's see. I'll go into Bill's stuff because that's kind of buried. We got a bunch of Eric stuff on the table. Um, Fairy lamp. I did pick up some. Actually, I think these did come from Bills. Yes. These these pieces of fun. Yeah, these did come from Bills. This is custard glass, and actually Mary, who I've talked about before, she's very good at helping me with my Murano. Uh, she actually sent me a picture of a piece of carnival glass that she picked up recently, and she said that she purchased it. And the gentleman collected carnival, but he never knew what the pattern was. And it was the exact same pattern as this. Now this is actually the orange tree, I do believe. And um, it's just a, a nice little dish. And I, I love the custard. I mean, I really, really love the carnival. I'm, I've been watching her uh, her Etsy shop to see when, or see her when eBay, it, her eBay. Yeah, I've been watching her eBay shop to see when that will <laughs> pop up. But uh, yeah, it's still got his original sticker and everything. Yep. So, so this piece right here. Yeah, unfortunately you said it's missing the top, it but is. we didn't know it. I wouldn't have known that because we didn't realize until we looked that particular one up that it had a glass insert. Yes, I did not know that. Because there's no recess for a let lid to sit on inside that that opening. It yeah. would it would just grind up against the glass. Mm -hmm. So they they made a separate clear glass insert that looks like a little yeah. Almost like an ashtray without the notches in it that sits inside and then the lid sat on that. Indeed, yes. So, so we have the bottom to a fairy light, which I'm sure there are people looking for replacements to the bottom of the fairy lights. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, this is a cool piece. I like that one. This came from Eric's. Yeah. It's nice. I like I like the colors. I love the luster. It's kind of a satsuma style. It's got some 
gentleman there. Um, it is Japanese. It is marked Trico, T-R-I-C-O, I do believe. Hand painted, can't read the bottom line. Uh, but anyway, these sell, I mean, the prices are like all across the board. Some of the really Art Deco ones made by Trico can sell for like close to 100 bucks. But since this one's not really super Art Deco, it's just got some, some old dudes on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would expect probably to get, I'm gonna say 25 to 35 for it. It's a cool piece, I it like is. it. I like I like the design of it and the I colors. The colors are so vibrant and with that peach luster. Ooh wee, mm -hmm. I like it. There's a cute piece. That is also part of a fairy lamp. Is it really? I believe so. I don't know, it's not. I could be wrong. I don't Ooh, know. Now you've got me thinking I'm wrong. I don't know. It should it could just be like a little compote, but the pattern is moon and stars. It was made by Ellie Smith, but it was also made by Kawana, Kawana, Wina, Wana. Kawana. That other glass company that I don't Kawana, really I wanna learn how refer to, to very often because I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that's Ellie Smith. This is pretty. Yes, it's got cherries on it. Yes, and it is a really nice vibrant red. It is, yeah. it's pretty. A little creamer with cherries. Nicely done. This is cool. I like the blue. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going for colors this week. Yeah, you are very this is colorful. Like a colorful, colorful week. Very we'll colorful. Covered dish. Mm -hmm. It's got a uh, slot for a spoon. Um, there are some really nice manufacturing bubbles in this. So it's got some age to it. Oh, why don't you pick something from over that way? What do okay. you see? Um. <laughs> see some blue stuff yes here's some blue stuff here's some blue stuff here's some more blue blue stuff oh i'm sorry i'm just trying to i, I was reading the article real quick um but it's like an onion pattern and it was made around the turn of the century around 1900 it is a uh, johnson brothers england flow blue it is really pretty pattern i like that Here's that pretzel mark again. The pretzel mark? It's not a pretzel mark though, it's got a crown on it. It's, it's a rope. <laughs> Conway. England. It's pretty too. It is. I'm probably gonna hoard it. <coughs> Christmas is coming. And then there are four of these plates with the scalloped edges. Mm -hmm. Terrain. So that's those. Very nice. All right. This is cute. I'm not quite sure what the use of this thing is. A little sauce dish or something. We've got some salt cellars. Oh yeah, we'll get to those. Austria. Austria. Hmm. That's cute though. Yeah. So I like the uh, hand, the shape of the handles. Interesting. Now, I want to say these are a set. They're just all painted different because they're all just different flowers. Mm -hmm. There's four of those, and then there's Nippon. four of these. Little Nippon salt cellars. Yep, there's four of those little. And then we've got these, these four ones. of these unmarked. And they're just we've had these before. Yeah, these are we've just got a plain, some. These are just a plain standard. Yeah, they are. And I've actually got the ones that I got at the um, antique store the other day. We went and picked up the sixth one, and yep. I've got to get those listed. So we've got some salt sellers there. Um, I'll pass you off a couple Puppies. figurines. Mm. Ooh, there goes my phone. Stranger Things. Don't want to get a copyright strike. No, we don't. Um, so this puppy is kind of exciting. It's marked for USA. There were a couple companies that were making these kind of hounds. Um, Morton Pottery was making the Hillbilly Hounds. Uh, then you've got Chic Pottery, C-H-I-C, which was also making these style hounds. And Grindley, all of them were making these style hounds. So I'm not exactly sure who made this, but it is marked USA. 
Yeah, he was cool. And I really love that style. I love that style. Yeah, I couldn't pass him up. He was in He's a flight great. with a bunch of other dogs. Um, this one... We have one that matches that. Yeah, does ours have a little like pinhole in the back? We have to look because this has a thing that says barometer. And I wonder if it had a barometer sticking out of it and you put what? it in your window. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. So now we know the, maybe the one that we have had a multiple use. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. You know, first looking at it, I thought, oh, well, maybe this is an old ornament because it's got the it's got the, the spot in the back, but it's not. It, it I had, believe it's it was made a, out of sandstone. It was a barometer. And a little Dalmatian. Dalmatian. He's uh, China, bone China. Mm. He's cool. So the figurines we usually get anywhere from eight to twelve dollars for just the little guys. This guy's cool. I gotta do some research on this, and I've never seen a plastic scalp before. I've never seen that toy. That's something totally different. He's got a mark on his back, but I can't really make it out very well. Um, I can research that a little bit. It's it's cool. It's yeah something different to me. Something Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. He's not very very old. He's not terribly old. Probably sixties. Probably 60s, so this guy's cute. Another dog figurine, but this has got the sticker on it. He was a souvenir. Oh. Um, he's made in Japan. Souvenir from 1937. The Great Lakes Exposition in Cleveland. Mm. So it's kind of like, it was kind of like a World's Fair type event. It was just, just a, uh, an exposition. Very cute. Got some uh, painted shakers here, mm -hmm. Japanese, floral. Yes. Those are cute. We love shakers, especially when they're fancy. I like this. Uh, this is this nice little piece of Nippon. Yeah, I like the design on that. I'm not quite sure that I don't recognize the mark on the back, but it's a bird. It's a really pretty. I liked the shape, the handles. Um, the mark is unusual. Hmm. It's not I've in seen English. That mark before. Yeah, I mean, so would it have had a sticker? Because it's le it's legally got to be in English if it's after a certain time period. Mm -hmm. So. I do not know the answer to that. I am not 100% familiar. There we go. It's a pretty piece. White yes, with the yellow. Yes, it's a melon vase. This shape right here is referred to as a melon vase. And it is cased. Oh, look at me. I'm rhyming. Um, it is cased, so it has a yellow interior and the white exterior, so it's considered cased. And I really like that. I like the contrast. Nicely done, babe. And there's no chips, right. which is impressive because... Um, that came from Eric. Of course it came from Eric. These oh, came Eric. from Eric, and I think I may have done this little doink myself oh, when I dropped the pin. You should just let Eric I, I dropped pack the pin. it. Well, these were an afterthought. These were offered to somebody else, and they got passed on. But for me, they were a shoe-in. I don't know what that means. You know what it is to be a shoe in? It's a guaranteed. Oh. It's, never mind. Okay. Anyway, they're both different. They are souvenir. One's Lancaster, PA. One's Norristown, PA. They're both local to here. Shoe ins. And these both are same, but these are both Lancaster. These are just these are just absolutely beautiful pieces. I I, I don't. And they're all made in Germany. This one's marked 1885. Mm, so pretty. And they're very like fine too. Yeah. Yeah, these are these are 1880s. There's no chips on them. No. 
No. Except for the ones that you chipped. For the one I doinked. <sighs> like a doink. This is cool. Um, now we thought this had a crack in it. Yes. And I took a jeweler's loop to this. I actually took two different powered jeweler's loops to this because it looks like a huge crack running through this. It is not cracked. Um, there is a flaw in the manufacturing of this item and the paint, whatever. Um, there may have been a crack in the mold when the glass was made. And then when the paint was applied, it's going to stick out. Yeah. So, but this is this is a really nice looking piece. This is an ewer. 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 Is that e hanging out with Tigger? Ewer. Is there a Tigger? An ewer. Oh, I'm showing you the wrong side. Ew. It's an ewer. It is very nice. Ernest goes to. E I believe they they normally came in pairs. Did you see the the bird? That is cool. I did not notice that. No, you did. It's now crazy. you want to keep it. That light is too bright. I don't want to keep it now. That's amazing. It is a really pretty piece. I like it. I couldn't let it just sit there. I was convinced it was not a crack. <laughs> I had a feeling it was not a crack, and I was right. Um, let's see. Trucking along. It's a cute little mustache cup. A mustache cup? Germany. Mm -hmm. I believe this is Nippon. Yes, this it's is really heavy. Hand painted Nippon. And it's short and stout, too. Short and stout? It's more like a teacup. It's like a mustache teacup. A mustache? Mustachio question? It's from Nippon. Nippon. Did pick up a little bit of clear glass. These are all open salts. There's six of these square ones and a pair of these oval shaped Master ones. Master salts? Mm hmm. And we've got a couple pieces of this too. I show you. I like the butter dish. Yeah. These were in the box, so it really wasn't something I picked out. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting pattern. It is. It's like a cube. Yeah. It's a cube pattern. Like something out of Tron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you're too young for Tron. I know what Tron is. Oh, you know what Tron is? I just don't know what a shoe in is. How do you not know what a shoe in is? I don't want to talk about it. It's a shame because I didn't notice this had as much damage as it does. Unfortunately, and I was I was the fun sponge have. that pointed it out. He's like, I got this really nice bullet. I'm like, otherwise, is that a massive chip in the bottom of it? Otherwise, uh, I would have left that one behind. Oh, uh, I am the fun sponge. Now it's okay. this Can't is stretch glass. Unfortunately, you guys can even see it, um, the chips in the bottom. But this is stretch glass, and the way I learned about stretch glass was actually my viewers. My viewers taught me about stretch glass because I had been at a thrift store and passed up a piece of glass that was iridescent, um, but it wasn't carnival. And I'm like, oh, it's not carnival, it's just iridescent. And I passed it over, and a lot of the viewers were like, oh, that's stretch glass. There's collectors for that. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's actually got some age to it. I guess it's 1920s. Oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're I, talking a hundred year old exactly, piece of glass. Exactly, so I, I don't dismiss it anymore. I'm like, okay. all right, all cool. Right. Cool beans. Like I said, the viewers do teach us stuff. Depression glass? Yes, depression glass. I like depression. that one because it's got the fancy around the edge. Yeah, this is probably Tiffin, I would think. Um, now, depression glass is really hard to sell. It is a really hard to sell. So unless you can get it for the right price, and you did because it was the flea market. Mm -hmm. I don't typically recommend it. I, unless you know what you're doing and you know the value well, of stuff. You if know, you know it's a specific pattern that sells for really good money, well, yeah, obviously. Obviously, you wanna, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. But I would not advise just going out and buying, buying a bunch of glass. depression glass unless you know what you're doing and unless you can get it for Next to nothing. super cheap. Um, because, unfortunately, the market of depression glass 
it's depressed. Um, <laughs> I crack myself up. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of. I know when I first started, um, I was buying a lot of depression glass and I learned that the hardware, the hardware. The hardware? I learned that the hard way. Hard um, way. Now granted, I did hit carnival glass before it went out of style and I made a lot of money on carnival glass, but it was on its way out and now it's basically out. Speaking mm. of carnival glass. That's a pretty piece though. It is a pretty piece and it's the red. Actually, you know what? That might be amberina now that I'm looking at it. You see that it's got yellow? Orangish, yeah. Yeah, you guys can't see it because <laughs> we're looking into the light and you're not. Um, but it's a nice, it's it's pressed glass. But uh, I don't know what that pattern is, that pressed glass pattern, but it's got a nice iridescence to it. Mm hmm. And it is the red ruby glass. Snag that big fancy handle bowl. Ooh. I like the handles on that, I really do. I do. It's very elegant. Etched. Etch this again, uh, depression glass, but it's a very elegant design. Um, I like the etching on it. It is mm, a nice piece. Pretty piece. It's possibly Fostoria. Big one right I'm just throwing out names. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's another pretty etched piece, and I want to say that that more than likely. They do not match. No, they do not. You're right. They do not tell us they match. When they do not. It is really pretty though. I like it. Personally, I like it. Just as far as resale goes, it's difficult. It's going to be tough. You know, just but the same with milk glass. I personally like it, but for resale, it's... It's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. And here's another pretty piece. Yeah. I like the handles on that. It's got some nice lines. Yeah. It's a fun shape. It's an odd shape. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that shape before. I like it. Um, so we're moving on to this side. Let's yeah, this. you got to okay. do some work. <laughs> <laughs> this one, when I was putting stuff out, uh, I see the uh, chip. See the chip. So this one's probably not going to go for sale. That one's probably going to get a it's toss. It's really nice. It's kind of a what cornflower blue. Mm, yeah. It's not technically no. cobalt. It's not cobalt, is it? I don't know. It's it doesn't little... matter because it's not going out. I know. It's a shame. This is pretty. Yeah, I like the handles That's on that too. Real ruby. Beautiful red glass. You can kind of see it when I put it in front of that light. <laughs> That's nice. And to get that ruby red color, gold. Um, they use gold. Gold. In the mixture. Um, oh, you want to talk about this? Oh, yeah. He's cool. Um, I actually I picked this little crock up for myself initially because it was a Gettysburg crock. Yeah. But then I flipped it over when I got home. I didn't notice it until after I got home. Um, Robinson, Robinson Rand's Bottom Pottery. Yeah. And I looked online, I can't find another one. That's awesome. There is not another one available Currently. currently or were on Worth Point or on eBay sold. I couldn't find an, a, a comp for it. So I don't know what, what it's going to bring. I'm not too familiar with the pottery, but I know it's popular. Mm -hmm. You like this one. That's a really pretty Nippon bowl. I like the contrast with the blue and the flowers. Yeah. And that is Nippon. It's nice and thin. Yeah, I would expect probably like 15 for that. Yeah. And we've got this piece. Some jadeite glass. It's kind of got that look like it would glow. We'll have to. We'll have to test it. Test um, it out. It's not marked Fire King or anything like that. Um, nice jadeite glass though. Pretty, pretty. We're on the last pile. That's what you think. What? I got three flats over here. But we're gonna, we're, these are just gonna be honorable mention. Okay. Oh, that's really pretty. That's Austria. It's got some beautiful roses on it. It appears to be transfer, but they are really pretty and vibrant. I like that. And it looks, unfortunately, it looks like they actually had a note on the back. A really old note. A really old note, probably about the provenance. Yeah, and it's, I've long. been rich, rich. Oh my God. It's been ripped. I can't even talk to 1968, me. though, they put that, that, note, that on there. note on there. They put that note on there in 1968. Oh, it's such a bummer that it's gone. It's all right, then we've though. got these. Those are nice. Now, in one of the other halls. Ooh. 
that we haven't filmed yet, there is a piece that looks identical to this. It's ironstone. Okay. Um, except that where these are green, mm -hmm. they used flow blue. Interesting. So it's like a wheat wheat sheaf pattern. Now there is the 1800s mark on the bottom of these. We have had a more modern piece recently that sold that was not, the design was the same design, but it's not raised. That was a smooth transfer design. Mm -hmm. This and one is charger. not a giant charger. Massive. Massive you charger. Did ship that? <sighs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Now I would try to show you guys this mark, but it isn't sized and you wouldn't be able to see it because I have to turn it just right in the light to even see it. But it is an 1800s mark. Um, it doesn't say the name of the manufacturer. It just yeah, indicates that it's 1800. It's a date mark is basically what it is. So. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, this is an interesting piece. I really liked the lines and the shape and the style of this bowl. This covered dish. 1940s? And it's marked made exclusively for Montgomery Ward and Company by the Hall China Company, made in USA. And I just it's it's just an amazingly shaped. I like the lines. It's it's an amazingly shaped it's all piece. About the lines. And it's in beautiful condition. Super, super nice like deco look to it. Absolutely. Um I've really been bad about watching Pay time. attention! <laughs> Pay attention! Well, usually the train goes by and we have to restart it anyway. Ooh, you want to see them? I do want to see them. Ooh. Then I want to put them on my face. I love these things. These things are amazing. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me wearing these glasses already. Yeah. Like, these things are I so need cool. those. You have fingerprints all over the glasses. This is probably me. Yeah. These things are amazing. And this is why I don't wear glasses when I do. Wait, you guys don't even see the glare, do you? There is no mm -hmm. glare. Look. Well, because they're tilted down. Do you uh, see how the the frame the glasses are tilted? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they're they're tilted. I could actually get away with wearing they're, glasses. They're tilted right? like this. That's why. Oh my goodness. It's the way the the the, the frame has got the lenses tilted. It's so that then the light's not hitting it. And I can actually see in these too. I mean, I'm, I'm, if you turn like this, if you go like this, I can see the, the ring light. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you but go. If you, but if you put your head down it's straight like on. weird looking. Look at that. <laughs> now put your head straight down. Yeah. And there's no glare on your eyes. Ta-da. You're right. They do Good look kind of tiny, though. They need to be sold. They need to be sold. <laughs> oh, man. They are, they are really cool. I like them a lot. Uh, this is cool. Nutmeg. But it's not a nutmeg dispenser. What is it? Do you know what it was? It was a lamp. Yeah, it was an oil lamp. Called nutmeg. And it was the manufacturer was nutmeg. Oh, that's neat. That's an 1800s, little 1800s oil lamp. Um, you know, not a super expensive piece, but still pretty darn cool. Oh, it's a cool. neat little piece of history. And I got it cheap enough, so we can sell it cheap enough, and somebody can get a cool little 18, yeah. piece of 1800s history, kind of like this. We um, we had one of these already, and this is same same bottle, Tower City PA, um, Attic Mint, beautiful piece of 1800s glass. Now that'll beautiful. be that'll be inexpensive. Um, <laughs> This is local. I have to look at the dairy. Afrata PA. This is a quart. Afrata? Afrata. What did you just call it? Afrata. Afrata? Afrata. Afrata? Afrata. Say it one more time. Afrata. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <clears throat> Afrata. Afrata. <laughs> Okay, it's so full of buffalo nickels. It is. I got the buffalo nickels in the bottle from Bill. The buffalo nickels I paid five bucks for. Five bucks he charged me for the buffalo nickels, okay. and there's sixty-five of them. So very good price. Um, bottle. I think he charged me eight for the bottle. I got to research the dairy because some of the um, some of those local Lancaster County dairies can do actually pretty well. 
from a frada. A frada. <laughs> a frada. I'm sorry. It's hey. cute. It's cute. Whatever. Whatever. A frada. <laughs> hmm. We need some room. No, we're not going to go too crazy on this. Um, I picked up some old scout shirts. Uh, they were two or three bucks a piece. Uh, the reason I actually picked these up is they still have the 1985 National Jamboree patches on them. So like the owl patch. And, um, oh, that is their Order of the Arrow Lodge. So they were Lodge number 39. Mm. Um, but this was cool too because this, this shirt actually belonged to an Eagle Scout. So that one's cool. That one's from the 85 Jamboree. This one is the 89 Jamboree. Assistant, this was the Assistant Scoutmaster. And they've got the Jamboree, World Jamboree, um, patch on there from Australia from wow. 87, 88. This one has got National Jamboree on it, World Jamboree in Australia. So this shirt's been, been around the world. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. 89 National Scout Jamboree, Assistant Scoutmaster. Um, and they have a four-digit troop number. So that means that four-digit troop number is a Jamboree troop. They don't generally, now there, I know there is an exception to that, to that rule, but very rarely do you see a four-digit troop number unless it's a Jamboree troop number. So this was a Jamboree shirt. This is all from the Australian World Scout Jamboree in 87, 88. December 30th, 1987 to January 10th, 1988. That's the year I was born. <laughs> but you weren't born yet when this stuff was made. Because <laughs> you didn't come out until, you, you weren't born until September. So, but yeah. So lot, lots of scout stuff. Lots of killer. 85 Scout Jamboree towel, souvenir towel. Um, this I couldn't, I don't normally get neckerchiefs too much. Hands a little faded. But this is an Eagle Scout neckerchief. Hmm. This I can actually pass off to my kid because my kid's an Eagle Scout. Um, tons of like paper items from the World Jamboree in Australia. And I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I got some goodies in here I'm for sorry, you. Sorry. I got some goodies in here for you. I didn't forget about you. Um, just just a small flat of scout pins that I have to go through. But I did pick up this little art glass flower. There's no damage to it. It's really pretty. That is really pretty. I picked up these goofy roosters. These little goofy <laughs> sh rooster shakers. Roosters. And these absolutely killer. Those are the ones I was grabbing for. That's why you pulled them out last. Because Duh. you know. Duh. <laughs> and these absolutely killer little like Goonie Bird looking things. Oh, they're so cute. Little birdies. Um, I won't get too crazy on this flat. This is uh, this is a whole nother bag full of 1980s National Jamboree what Scout are you patches. What do with all of these patches? Are we these are all them? getting re. Well, there's a lot of duplicates in here. Okay. Um, so a lot of these are going to get resold. There will be some picking. I will do some picking and choosing for a couple. The only reason I ask um, is I know you passed a lot of it off to your dad, so I'm just for their sake. I'm I I do, but there's some of this will be will be listed for those who who are into the Scout stuff. Um, it's just a matter of having time to process it. That's because Andrew processes his own stuff. I got cigar labels listed. You did. You did a very good job. I get a ton of Pennsylvania Railroad stuff. And when yeah. I say a ton of Pennsylvania Railroad stuff, Holy smokes. I got some killer stuff in here. There's things in, in this flat that go back into the 1890s, 1880s. Um, I, I, I really don't even know how to describe what's in here. There are passes, there are baggage tags, there are books, there are maps, there are blueprints, um, there are cardboard signs talking about 
the dis discontinuance of service for the Blue Diamond dedicated line in 1965. Um, the majority of the railroad stuff that's in this box is like 1920s and earlier. Um, this is really cool. That is an entire fold-out map. There's a blueprint in there on how to build a road grade crossing for cars. And they use cobblestones because the, the most recent revised date on it is 1909. Oh my gosh, that's so neat. Yeah, so there's some really, really cool railroad history in here. Um, there's labor agreements, there's passes, there's brochures for um, the introduction. They, what they would do is when they introduced a new line, they would name it. Um, one of them is the Astro Train, and it legitimately looks like a cross between a train and a muscle car with a scoop on it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, but the, the graphics are amazing. Um, the General. The General was another one. It was a steam locomotive. So they would do these big brochures and advertise. That one was put out in 1937. The uh, aero train is buried down on the bottom. Um, but there's just, there's so much railroad memorabilia here. I've got stuff that goes up to Conrail, which was one of the more recent. Um, there's a watch. There's a, a, a Conrail watch, but there's also a card in here that tells me who got this watch as a gift wow. or, or an award from Conrail. Um, ticket clicker, but it's marked PRR for Pennsylvania Railroad and dated 1917 when it was issued. Um, That's so cool. These are from the 70s from, an, from another defunct railroad called Penn Central, which was taken over by Conrail. Um, and Penn Central took over Pennsylvania Railroad. They, that's what they changed to. But these are orders. These are, these are orders for the engineers and for the railroad workers. And I, I only opened one. Um, for example, it was talking about between this signal and this signal, they're not working. Uh, maintain 50 miles an hour, no more. Um, Pennsylvania Railroad. Rubber stamp, yep, where you could change the date. And actually, if you notice, I noticed this. That's my birthday. I know, on the stamp, <laughs> yeah. But what's really cool about this is if you press the button on the side, it releases this. Yeah. And you can flip these and change it to whatever you need to change it to. And then you just close it back up. That is so cool. And you stamp. So that's cool. Um, Conrail belt buckle. Is that, that's actually a safety award. We've got a uh, Conrail hat badge for a, this one's a trainman. We've got an assistant foreman. Now this is an older hat badge. Uh, yes. Here, let me show. This one's the coolest. I'll show you this. Um, big, huge brass railroad lock key. This is a cool pin. I, I have to do some research on this. It's an enamel pin with a locomotive and a red signal, but the number 52 could be significant as to designating what, what locomotive that was, because every locomotive has a number. And they can, they can tell you, that the number will tell you what service that engine ran on so they kept records about all that that's really cool so there's a lot of history in these boxes there's um this in particular here this is a re invoice and record book pennsylvania railroad company uh, i'll just put it in the little box here that i just dumped out <laughs> um invoice and receipt book for the pennsylvania railroad company um this is dated 1889 and this is for a particular company. This was their receipt book for their transfers using the Pennsylvania Railroad. Sorry. Curry Canaan and Company. And all the shipping that they did with the Pennsylvania Railroad from September 27th, 1889. I wonder what kind of company it was. Back through... 
1889. That doesn't make sense. Oh, that's November. That's why. Yeah, that's yeah. November, November 9th, eighteen eighty nine, September to November. Look at all the. I mean, this is all the shipping they did with the Pennsylvania Railroad. In just a couple months, that's they filled nuts. that little book. So there's a ton of history here. Some really amazing stuff. Um, in that thousand dollar haul we got, there was a ton of railroad stuff in that, mm -hmm. and I believe it was from the same estate same auction because those guys go to the same auction and they both get some of the some of the same stuff um, so yeah. I think that I think you did all right how what was your total spend so I spent a hundred dollars on the first trip through with Bill and then I spent an additional 50 so my total spend with Bill was 150 I spent 175 with Eric um, so that's what uh, two three and a quarter plus 20 for the haul, mm -hmm. haul uh, 345 and another 10, 350, so 350 bucks. Yeah, I think we can make it back. You just gotta list that Pennsylvania stuff. It's good stuff. I think you did all right. All right. <laughs> all right, well I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and going over all the stuff that Andrew bought. I'm gonna, hoard, I'm gonna hoard the flow blue though. We'll see. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, we've got more videos to film tonight. Yeah. Because the kids are off seeing Frozen oh. 2 with my parents. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, I totally forgot. Oh. 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 One more item that I, I absolutely, I, I really need to show this because um, when it comes to artwork, if a piece of art is, is really impressive to me, I think it deserves a shout out. This guy, this Joseph Woltcheck, he actually went to the same school that Norman Rockwell went to. Oh, wow. He's local to New Buffalo, PA. He's only like three years older than my dad. So he's really he's not that old. Um, but he does amazing railroad prints and paintings. This one, there was only 1,050 of these made. And it's cool because he, he signed, he, well, he doesn't sign, but he does his nor, his, sign, his name on there. Yeah. Like a Norman Rockwell block, old-fashioned block letters. But this one is autographed. And this is called the Spirit of Altoona. And this is just a gorgeous Pennsylvania Railroad print. And on the bottom, bottom underneath of the tower is where he signed it. Over here on that corner. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's there. Very neat. Yeah. So now he signed it in both places. No, he only signed, he signed it there. This is this is actually printed on the print. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's that an actual signature. Yeah, that one's an actual signature. Nice. So I was able to find these online, sold. Most of them were framed. This one is still in the original shipping cardboard with the original two sheet like autobiography on the artist um, and the original outer envelope, even though it's like kind of moth eaten, <laughs> but it's got his name and return address in his hand wow. written on there. So this, That's this was neat. one. He he definitely would have would have had in his possession, so I'm really happy with this piece. Um, they've sold for around a hundred bucks. It's it's a hundred dollar print all day long, and and I'm super excited about it. That is exciting. I like that. I do too. So, with that said, I don't think I did too shabby. No, not at all. I, I noticed you were kind of like groaning a little bit about 350 bucks. Well, a little bit. That was the first I heard about your total spend. But I, you know. Well, I know there's a lot of here's Here's a $100 piece. Let's, we'll, we'll make no, it not hurt no, as bad. No, here's the deal. I know you have a lot of money into the railroad stuff, but I know you also spend a lot of time packing. So because you're spending so much time shipping, you don't have as much time, time to, list. to list. And you like to list the well, stuff that's that you change. know. Well, that's going to change. Yeah. We got some changes coming. 
So that's my only concern is that the money's tied up until you get a chance to list it. And so that's why I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, don't pick up a bunch of stuff <laughs> that you're just gonna pile away and get to and get to and get to because one of the things that's gonna do to you is um, you're gonna feel overwhelmed. You're not gonna know where to start. You're not gonna know what to start with. Yeah. You're, you're gonna just, and then what's gonna happen is it's gonna get shoved back even further, even longer, and more is gonna get built up on top of it. Mm -hmm. So if you can't, if you can't process it as soon as you bring it back, you really should not be buying it. Don't go out looking for it if you can't process it. Yeah. Now once it's processed, and when I mean processed, listed, available for sale, sitting on a shelf, it can take up the space. Then go out and go get new stuff, fresh inventory. Yeah. Um, I don't follow my own advice. I should, um, but I don't. But our situation's a little different. Yeah. So, um, but what we do does not work for everybody. What everybody else does not necessarily work for us. I will get to listing this stuff. I'm working on it. I'm getting there. I'm in between. Getting I know. those cigar labels. I know. Um, Casey and I are going to spend an entire day tomorrow from this video, yeah. which will probably be, I don't know, anyway, I can't, I don't know how she schedules these videos anymore, it's like, let's film it, and then here it pops up two weeks later, and like, <laughs> oh, I forgot we did that. <laughs> so, oh but Casey's going to be an expert on cigar labels. Um awesome she's gonna be an expert on limoges too because she took the book home and studied it yes so <laughs> um so that's my plan get, get some of this other stuff listed everybody keeps asking me about and i really just need to uh buckle down and do it yes i agree and i will you heard it <laughs> you heard it i'm stuck to it now. <laughs> all right well on that note we are going to end this video because we have more videos to film well, the kids are off watching Frozen 2 with my parents. Yes. Actually, I get to take a break now because she has to film one by herself. I thought that's true. Yeah. <sighs> All right, and we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye.